I'm Elise from iThemes, and I'm here today to talk to you about Gutenberg. If you're not aware, Gutenberg is an upcoming feature for WordPress that will replace your current editor. While this won't be added to WordPress itself until sometime probably around the end of November, you can go ahead and test it out now with the Gutenberg plugin. So let's go ahead and take a look at the new Gutenberg editor. To get started using Gutenberg, you'll first need to install the plugin. To do this, you're going to come to Plugins, Add New, where you can search for the Gutenberg plugin. Once you've found it, click Install Now, and then you'll want to go ahead and activate it. With the Gutenberg plugin now installed and activated, you can begin using it to create your posts and pages. So we're going to go create a new post. As you can already tell, this is quite different from your current editor, but you're still going to find a lot of your information here on the left side of the screen, such as your post visibility, like whether or not it's published or a draft, and you can change that information. You also will find your categories and tags still here on your right. And if, for instance, you're using the uh, builder theme for your site, you're going to find that information here as well. You'll also notice that there's a block option. So once you select a block, you'll have different options here depending on the block that you're using. So let's go ahead and give this post a title. And we're just going to call this Gutenberg. And this here is our first block. And that's the title block. So start adding new blocks. When you hover over this area, you'll see a plus sign, and this opens up your different options. So here you'll find options like paragraph, image, you can add a gallery, you can add another heading. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with just a paragraph. And I'm just going to copy and paste in some information I found earlier on Johann Gutenberg, who created um, the printing press, and who this block is named after. So now that I have a block here under this block section, you'll see that I can edit my text settings, including sizes, color, I can even add a drop cap if I want to. I can also find more options here, such as editing the HTML, um, add to a reusable block, lots of options. With my text block now completed, I can start adding new blocks. I can do this by clicking the plus sign up here in the top left corner and selecting my next block type. I'm going to add an image this time. I can either select from my media library or I can upload a new image. With the image loaded into the block, I can write a caption for it, change the alignment, and I can even add my alt text and adjust sizing and the like over here. If I decide that I don't like the order that my blocks are in, when hovering over the block, you'll see this option here. So this arrow lets me move it up, or I can grip it and move it up myself. And so I've switched my block locations as simple as that. Once I've added all of my blocks and have everything set up just how I like, I can go ahead and preview. So this shows me exactly what the block I've just created using Gutenberg will look like. Once I'm happy with everything and I've previewed my posts or page, I can go ahead and click the Publish option. Here it gives me some more options. It's double checking that I'm ready to publish. I can make it public, private. Just like with the current editor, I can also select when I'd like this post to be published. And it gives me additional suggestions such as adding tags to my post. I'm happy with my post the way it is and I want to go ahead and publish it now, so I'm just going to click this Publish option. So now my Gutenberg post is live. So my next options are I can go ahead and visit the post, or I can just copy the link to the post in case I want to share that. And that's it for today. Thank you for joining us for this quick overview of the new Gutenberg editor. We'll catch you next time.